a new season, a new dawn for Formula E. It's time to unleash the power of Gen 3. More power, more speed, more drama. Are you ready? Let's go racing. Welcome to the second installment of the ABB FIA Formula E season preview as we look ahead to another year of electrifying action. Over the next half an hour, we'll be hearing from reigning champion Stoffel van Dorn as the Belgian reflects on his charge to the 2022 world title. It still feels great. You know, it's always the best feeling when the moment just happens. But I'm still very proud of uh, everything that I achieved last year. And taking a closer look at the first stop on the Formula E World Tour, the vibrant Mexico City. The first with a new season comes new rules. So here's everything you need to know ahead of season nine. Now entering a new generation of racing for the sport, we welcome new improvements to the racing format that will require more strategic planning and skill as we shake up the action. Season 9 will see 22 drivers and 11 teams go head-to-head -head in 16 races around the world in a battle to win the title of world champion. So, how does it work? Ahead of each race, drivers will partake in qualifying. Initially separated into two groups, they battle it out through multiple rounds to secure their grid position for the race. Race distance will be measured in laps. The driver who completes the set number of laps in the fastest time wins the race. However, there are several strategic decisions that could impact or improve performance. In each race, competitors will be allowed to take four minutes of attack mode in two uses. The driver must go off the racing line into the attack mode activation zone to get a big power increase of 50 kilowatts. When activated, the driver can choose one of three scenarios. Two two minutes, three one, one three minutes, which locks them into a strategy for the race. Then we have attack charge. In selected races during the season, drivers must enter the pits to receive a fast charge boost of energy, which can then be used for an even longer attack mode activation once back on the track. It's all about energy in and energy out. It's a balance. Lastly, points and rankings. The first 10 finishers score points. First place receives 25 points, all the way down to one point for 10th. Three extra points are awarded to the driver who wins the Julius Baer pole position in qualifying. Season nine will leave you on the edge of your seat, all the way to the finish line. Time now for our second look at the runners and riders for season nine. And after three seasons with the now defunct DS to Cheetah team, it's on to past his new for Antonio Felix da Costa as he joins Tag Heuer Porsche for 2023. Pascal Verlein remains with the German outfit, having delivered their only win in Formula E. The new Gen 3 has been a, a super cool surprise look. As a racing driver, when you tell us you're going to get more power, less weight, it's all we want to hear, you know? So, essentially now driving here, having a proper comparison with, with the previous cars, uh, it feels super quick. We have a lot of power in the car now. Hard to handle, it's a, it's a difficult car to master and I think for our fans that's going to be that's going to be very cool, you know, we're going to produce a good show, good racing. The ambitions of this brand on and off the racetrack are very simple, you know, they, they're here to win. Avalanche Andretti add Andre Lotterer to their lineup for Season 9. The German still looking to secure his first win in the championship, having played the bridesmaid once again in 2022. Hoping to build on last year's success, Jake Dennis will continue with the American team for a third season. Super excited to be uh, doing my third season with these guys. Uh, and yeah, new car, you know, that's obviously going to be the biggest talking point of the year. How it fares up against last season and trying to, you know, produce the best results possible. Sebastian Buemi's name was once synonymous with Edams, having driven with them for eight successive years, winning a championship title along the way. But season nine will mark a new dawn in the Swiss driver's career as he makes the switch to Envision Racing in hope of revitalizing his title challenge. I do enjoy the challenge. I've been fighting Envision Racing for many years and they've been a strong, a strong team in the championship. So hopefully um, together with the partnership with, with Jaguar, we'll have a strong car and fight at the front. Nick Cassidy secured his maiden victory in the series and Envision's only win of 2022, something the Kiwi will be looking to follow up this year. 
Neo333 had a largely fruitless campaign in season eight, finishing 10th overall in the team standings. However, in his rookie year, Dan Tickton showed flashes of his potential with the top 10 finish in Rome. Now in his second year with the Chinese owned team, the Brit will be looking to show just what he's capable of. Last year in season eight was very tough. Lots of things to adapt to, obviously been been racing combustion engine cars my whole life and then but to be fair I actually I got used to it quicker than I thought I would. The strategies in the race for example were a big difference. Overall I enjoyed lots of it. There were some tough times as well but I, yeah I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to this season. Alongside him will be the Brazilian Sergio Sete Camera, another driver eager to showcase his talents in 2023. New for this year is the Neon McLaren team, who welcomed Germany's René Rast back to Formula E, a driver who's no stranger to the podium. Alongside him will be Brit Jake Hughes, who, having been Mercedes reserve driver in 2022, makes the step up to a full-time drive for season nine. I think it's a really good time for me to join, um, a change of, of regulations. I don't see it as any advantage, but it's definitely less of a disadvantage for a rookie. My sort of time spent with Mercedes previously, learning how Gen 2 works, but more importantly, I think learning how the race weekends work and especially how to manage the race was extremely crucial in, in my preparation for now. And obviously we're here in Valencia, I've got to experience the car for the first time and I feel straight away very sort of at home in, in the car, but also in terms of how to manage Formula E. So that's a credit to all the work we did previously in the Gen 2 era. Season 8 proved to be the year of Stoffel Van Dorn, consistently getting results under intense pressure to come out on top. We caught up with the Belgian to get his thoughts on that championship winning season, as well as his future ambitions, driving for new team, DS Penske. Yes, boys. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. What a way to win it. There is nobody, nobody that deserves that under you. You're a superstar. Seven champions in eight years. Van Dorn is the next to have his name engraved on the Formula E World Championship trophy. It still feels great, obviously, although, you know, it's always the best feeling when when the moment just happens. Um, but yeah, I'm still very proud of uh, everything that I achieved last year. Eight podiums in 16 races, and that is what has delivered the World Championship. Last year was definitely all about consistency, and that's yeah really what I, I managed to pull off during the, the whole season. I think the key for that was the, the, the work ethic that I put in, the mental strength as well, I would say, because Formula E weekends are very tough. There's a way you have to deal with certain emotions because the highs and, and the lows that you're getting through a, a Formula E racing day are incredible. And that's what you have to manage, I feel. It's your emotions to, you know, not get put aside by them and, uh, yeah, just keep working on it. 2021 was, for me personally, a very tough season, partly because of the lack of luck, I would say. There were a lot of instances in that season where you know, I was leading the race, I got taken out or was in a podium position and, and got taken those, those points away from me. So I already felt like that season I could have won the championship, but for you know, one reason or another, it didn't happen. And the two Mercedes collide, Van Dorn's in the wall facing backwards. So I feel like that built a very good foundation for 2022. And I'm not sure if I really changed my approach for 2022, but my mindset was very much going to every weekend that I'm not gonna let or leave anything off the table that is gonna cost me performance. And I wanted to give, uh, give everything, make sure that I give the, the very best of myself and uh, yeah, perform as good as I can every, every time I hit the track. The most famous racetrack on the planet is looking towards the future as the incomparable streets of Monte Carlo host the Monaco E-Prix. I think the first moment where I thought we can go for the championship was maybe Monaco. So Van Dorn leads the way ahead of Mitch Evans in second place. Actually, I believed in it before and, and I knew I was capable of doing, but you know, having built that momentum with the start of the season, having had a good first round in Saudi 
and then kind of consistently fight for the podiums. I knew that I was capable of winning the championship if I kept my cool, if I kept doing my job on track and keep the consistency high. This is the one we just won Monaco! This one feels good. Monaco was the first win. It was the only win of my season. To have won that race feels very special. It was kind of my home race as well because I'm living there. You know, to have my family around as well and, and so much support was, uh, yeah, was just a, a very special feeling. We're about to go racing on the streets of London in this race that is going to be crucial for the championship. The end of last season was very intense because the battle was really narrowing down to two guys, myself and Mitch. All five lights are on and we go green in London. Those final races were just very intense mentally to make no mistakes, to keep delivering on track, whether it's qualifying or, or the races. I remember the race in London actually where both me and Mitch started a little bit further back, but we were really cutting through the field, making really good progress. And the car's going crazy. Something's not right. Evans has a problem, I think. Unfortunately, Mitch had to retire from that race, but uh, I remember that moment being super intense, and, and it felt like we were putting, you know, the championship on the line at that race. Right up, mate. That's P4. Well done. I feel really sorry for Evans. He drove an amazing race as well. Anyway, we take this. We take this. I have great memories of it. It's a moment I really enjoyed. I think those moments are what, uh, what define champions in the end. What a journey it's been. Thank you so much to be part of it. We deserve this so much. I'm gonna have some great memories. It's gonna be a big change for me, going to a brand new team, DS Penske, for next season, together with a new generation of cars as well. Uh, I actually feel like this is a, a good moment to, to swap teams. Obviously, I'm joining a group of people that has been very successful in the past, and I feel like together with my own experience that I've had over the last four years in Formula E, we've got both a lot to bring to, towards each other. And our ambitions are very high. Our, our common goals are, are to fight for victories, to win championships, and uh, yeah, I very much hope so we can, uh, we can achieve those targets. Jeff and I are going to be new teammates for next year, but you know, we've known each other for quite a while already. It's definitely going to be the first time we're actually working together on track, but uh, so far everything has been, been going very well. We've both got a lot of winning between us and a lot of podiums. Uh, you know, Jeff, the only double champion in the series, and now myself, the, you know, the latest champion. So we've got a lot of experience and um, I feel like this will benefit uh, our, our own driving and, and definitely the team pushing forward. To be fair, I couldn't name one single person right now who's going to be the biggest threat for, for season nine. Uh, there's so many variables, so many new things for, for next season that it's too early to say really who is going to be our, our closest competitors. I hope it'll be between myself and Jeff to fight it out. That would be a, a luxury position for our team to be in. But uh, we just got to keep working hard. There's a lot of new development coming with Gen 3. A lot of opportunities to, um, you know, to create a, a very strong package and uh, that's where our focus is and then we'll worry about, uh, about the others later. The recent pre-season tests in Valencia were the perfect time to measure the field against each other ahead of Season 9. And reigning champion Van Dorn was one of the most impressive of the week, posting the second fastest lap time for new team Diaz Penske just one-tenth of a second shy of the benchmark set by McLaren's Jake Hughes. As well as the usual suspects, there were a host of faces making a welcome comeback to the Formula E paddock, with René Rass returning, this time at the wheel of a neon McLaren. And Norman Nato joining the Nissan Formula E team. The Frenchman scored a win in his last Formula E appearance in Berlin two years ago, after topping the times in one of the test sessions he could be one to watch for 2023. After a tough off-season battling COVID and missing valuable testing as a result, Oliver Rowland seemed to make up for lost time in Spain. The Mahindra driver posted impressive lap times to sit within the top five overall in Valencia, meaning things are looking up for the Indian outfit, who will want to improve on their single podium finish last season. So far we've been on track here in Valencia and um, 
We've understood the cars, um, we've understood where our weaknesses are, and it's just really important now how we take that away and, and improve it for the season. But I think uh, overall it's a new challenge for everyone and something that I think uh, all the drivers are quite excited for. While the paddock has seen one of the biggest shakeups ever in the driver lineup, Jaguar TCS Racing have kept the faith in Sam Bird and Mitch Evans for a tilt at the title with the Kiwi clear on the amount of work still ahead. A lot to learn, a lot still yet to be discovered. Um, the extra power is, is um, obviously it's always welcome with, with racing drivers, but we have a lot of power now. Um, and obviously with the instant torque, it, it makes it you know quite challenging. So we're still learning about this car and we will continue to learn a lot, especially throughout the season and, and continue the development phase, especially through the software, to be able to optimize you know, both front and rear powertrains and, and obviously get a real understanding about this new tire. While Evans has been a title challenger for the last two seasons, Neo 333 Racing have been towards the back of the grid. But there were positive signs coming from their garage in Valencia, with Dan Tickton reporting progress made and many predicting brighter things for the team in 2023. The real test, though, will come on January the 14th in the opening race in Mexico City. After the break, we're off to North America for a preview of everything our season opener has to offer. Welcome back to the 2023 Formula E season preview as we count down to the first race in Mexico City. This will be the first time the season has kicked off in North America and it's set to be a thrilling curtain raiser for season nine. The Mexican capital will be making its seventh appearance in the championship, once again seeing thousands of fans flock to the famous Foro Sol baseball stadium. And it's sure to be a hard act to follow. But there are plenty of incredible cities lined up for season nine. So time now to take a closer look at our 2023 calendar. After January's opener in Mexico City, there's a doubleheader in Diria on the cards, with back-to-back -back night races in Saudi Arabia for rounds two and three. Then a trio of new tracks, with a warm welcome assured for round four in Hyderabad as we break new ground in India. Another two Formula E firsts off the back of that, with Cape Town hosting a race on February the 25th for a maiden voyage to sub-Saharan Africa before the inaugural Brazilian E Prix with the sparks sure to fly on the streets of Sao Paulo. Next up is a return to Formula E favourite Berlin for our second doubleheader of the season before one of the highlights of the calendar, the Monaco E-Prix. In June, we turn up the heat with two races in Jakarta, Indonesia before our fourth new track of the year as we take to the streets of Portland, Oregon for the first time. Then back to Europe for a double header in the eternal city of Rome before the season finale in the championship's spiritual home of London. So a whole host of new tracks for drivers to get their teeth into as Formula E continues to deliver all electric action to every corner of the globe. But before we get into what this year holds for our season opener, let's first remind ourselves of some of Mexico's most colourful highlights. The first race was at Mexico City's Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in 2016, with Jerome D'Ambrosio on pole for Dragon Racing. And we go green in Mexico City! Go, go, go! Having already made their pit stops to change cars, Lucas Degrassi made a move on D'Ambrosio for the de facto lead of the race. Lucas Degrassi is going to win in Mexico City with a fantastic drive! Woo! But that win would be stripped from the Brazilian and handed to D'Ambrosio as one of Degrassi's cars was found to be underweight. One year later, Audi's Lucas Degrassi made amends. It's victory for Degrassi in Mexico! That to me is one of the most impressive drives. <laughs> it was Degrassi's first win in a year and he'd go on to seal the Formula E driver's title. Season four saw Degrassi's Audi teammate Daniel Abt take top honours in the Mexican capital. Yeah! <laughs> it was all changed in 2019 as the new Gen 2 car was unleashed and with attack mode replacing pit stops. But it was business as usual for Audi as their winning streak continued in perhaps the most memorable race in Formula history. Yeah! 
Mahindra's Pascal Verline was on pole position for the first time. But it was season one champion Nelson Piquet Jr. grabbing the early headlines. Oh, that's a big airborne crash for Nelson Piquet. I'm okay, I'm okay. In the closing laps, Verline was leading to Grassi, but energy was at a critical level. Verline's got 1%. Can he get to the line before he hits 0%? Degrassi goes for it. Verline covers. Whoa! Here comes Verline out of the final corner. He hits zero. Degrassi wins. Oh, that race! Oh man, I never had so much adrenaline. 2020 saw a dominant display from Jaguar's Mitch Evans after he took the lead at Turn One. It was the Kiwi's only victory of season six. Yes, guys. Here's just how he's bad, mate. Superb drive. There was a new venue for 2021, with the traditional circuit being used as a medical facility during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Racing moved to the city of Puebla for a double header. And we go green in Puebla. The first race looked to have been sealed by Pascal Verlein in what would have been the Germans' first ever win, but a technical infringement handed victory to Lucas de Grassi. <laughs> Lucas de Grassi wins for the third time in Mexico. The next day, Edo Mortara took his first win of the year for Venturi. <laughs> <laughs> on the way to a runners-up position in the Metropolis Championship. Last year, the race returned to Mexico City, and there was another redemption story as Pascal Verlein finally took his and Porsche's first ever victory in Formula E. It's a historic day for Porsche as they take their first Formula E win with a 1-2 in Mexico. Brilliant, boy. 1-2. Well done. As we look ahead to the opening round of Season 9, the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez is one of the fastest tracks on the Formula E calendar. And with the introduction of the Gen 3 car for Season 9, there's no better place to debut the fastest, lightest and most powerful car this series has ever seen. Here's a look at what the drivers will be facing in Mexico City. The 2.6-kilometre-long circuit features 19 turns with a mix of fast and technical sections. Turn 1 will offer plenty of drama as 22 drivers get their elbows out. Grip will be at a premium through Turn 4 before the double apex at 5 and 6. Then there's a new chicane on the run towards the stadium section and thousands of screaming fans. The all-important attack mode activation zone will be on the outside of Turn 15. The extra power boost coming in use around the iconic Peritalda curve at 19 before the sprint to the finish line. And that is a lap of the Mexico City circuit. Looking ahead to Mexico, very exciting to go. I think it's one of the best venues in the Family e Championship. Thanks to the fans, they're very enthusiastic. Racing through that stadium is, is quite special and very unique in motorsport. This is a, a real honor and a privilege to, to experience as a driver. The track is really nice because it has um, different characters of corners. The last corner is a really high speed corner where you need a lot of stability in the car, which is stressing the outside tires quite a lot. But then you also have the infield section, which is very technical. So Mexico has a bit of everything. Energy management definitely is a, is a priority there and also the track is quite undulated, especially on the stadium sector. So you need a car which is both stable at high speed and very compliant over the bumps. So it's, it's always a compromise. The most amount of overtakes is probably turn one. Probably also some other few corners will be, yeah, would be good for the show, probably turn two and, uh, and, and also the airpin. Uh, I guess that this year with the new chicane, probably this is also gonna be like a good one. But uh, everything to discover and uh, let's see. That's a wrap for us and our sneak peek into a brand new season of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Join us again soon as Season 9 gets underway on the 14th of January in the vibrant Mexico City. You wouldn't want to miss it.